Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for my March makes. I can't believe another month has gone and passed us by that quickly. We are starting to think about all our autumnal and winter makes here in Australia. I know for a fact I have been starting to look at some kind of winter weight coating fabrics because I do love a good coat jacket but we are still having the occasional beautiful sunny day like today um, and I know that it's still in between so not quite ready to head right on into the uh, really cozy makes yet but I wanted to recap all my makes a lot of these from March um, there's some you haven't seen some that you have but I always love to do a recap because I know you guys love that too and if you aren't familiar with the channel my name's Kristen and this is the Dally Society where we talk about anything to do with sewing your own wardrobe fabric and pattern inspiration and I do have a fabric online store where I sell not only fabric and patterns but monthly bespoke boxes as well and don't forget that this month's box is releasing tonight. Big reminder for all of you guys here that are wanting to purchase one 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And it is the beautiful uh, Easter Bonnet Parade box. So excited. I think you guys are going to really love this fabric. It is just so up my alley and I know a lot of you guys as well. Um, and the treats, I must say, are pretty delectable. And smell beautiful as well. I'm not going to give any more away because I'm already giving way too much information out. But yeah, if you're wanting one of those boxes, they are in limited numbers. So don't forget you need to be quick to jump on and purchase one of those. This make for March was one that I had made a couple of years ago now. I wanted to remake because I just thought, why have I got one of those patterns in the stash that I know I love? I know fitted really, really well, but I haven't made any. Uh, and this one is what I'm wearing. It is the Closet Core um, Cello cello some people say cello i'm pretty sure it's cello but i'm not 100 percent. but i love this top it's a great little boxy top fantastic for wearing with high-waisted either pleated or elastic pants or high-waisted skirt jeans you can make it in a dress version as well uh, i think i do have some of the patterns in the online store but it's a fantastic one for giving you plenty of options you've also got the long sleeve billowy kind of sleeve i haven't made that one before in this but it would give it a totally different look this is in a really lovely cotton linen blend um, from designer marnie stewart and this was a narrow to handsome fabric i had in last year that of course sold out as fast as lightning like most of the beautiful narrow to handsome fabrics do uh, but i love it it's just so uh, eclectic and really i love that artistic kind of um print that illustrated print it really is all beautiful colors and bright colors in this i really like the navy background with the really pretty teal i think navy and teal is such a nice combination with that bright green and bright pink in there but such a lovely top to make really really nice to wear i think because of that nice deep hem and the nice kind of cuff sleeve the neckline's really nice not too big and gapey just a really lovely um kind of shape but really happy with this top um, and of course i made the size 14 in the regular cup size if you haven't made the cello before i can highly recommend it uh, i must say that from what i've heard the dress version is quite short so if you're planning on making it in the dress check the length um, if you're wanting to have it more of a knee length uh, you need to lengthen it a bit but i really like how the pockets um the pockets sit on that dress version it's just constructed really really well um, as is most closet core patterns are always beautiful. Um, so with it, I wanted to make a pair of pants. Now the style like pants that I've been looking at for a while were the bobs and the barriers. Yeah, if you I remember, I did a whole episode on my favorite comfy elasticated waist pants. Now these are all the woven ones. I have had a couple of people recommend some great knit ones. Of course, that could be an extra episode to have out because there are quite a few knit pants that I love wearing. So I'm thinking of another episode for that, definitely. Um, but the ones that I made, with a barry from Starlark and I have them here in a really nice linen viscose blend that was from my store there could be a tiny bit of that left lovely ink navy now I do have other colors in the store and there is I think there's a tiny bit of black and navy left but yeah not much left so I'm starting to already think about pants for winter what I want to make maybe even some gabardine pants or some cotton twill not really sure I still like that viscose drape but of course leading into autumn winter you're wanting something a little bit more dense and a bit more warm um so but i still like the drapes so that's just a decision i need to make what i want to make my pants from for winter but these were really fantastic pair of pants the berries um 
These have a really nice angled pocket and a lovely kind of paper bag waist. Um, they are fantastic. And I love the little pleat down the bottom, the little uh, dart. Um, they're just a, a lovely and comfortable to wear. Um, they've got a nice high waist. Uh, I've heard the Barry, the, the Bob, I should say. These are the Barry. I've heard the Bob are a little bit more, um, have a lot more ease in them and are maybe a tiny bit higher in the waist. I really like to try them. Um, I ha yeah, I, I think I need to, to give those a go because I've had, I have sold a lot of the Bob patterns and people do say they are a really unique um, style of pant on. So maybe one that you need to test the waters yourself. Uh, a lot of people are getting more adventurous with sewing pants, which is great as well, because they are such a great practical thing to have in the wardrobe. So this was a really nice, cute little ensemble for wearing on a warm day. Now, I am a real dressed person. I love a good dress. But towards the end of summer, I started having a fixation on wanting to wear skirts and tank tops a lot. I just found them really practical and easy and a little bit more casual than a dress. So um, the thing with skirts is they're great for all year round as well. They're great for layering. Um, but I had this really beautiful fabric, uh, Lady McElroy cotton lawn, this gorgeous fabric in the store. And I wanted to show you the print, um, which was a really lovely um, sort of a jungle African print called Beyond the Sunset. And you can really see that beautiful imagery in there. It has a real 70s kind of retro vibe. I wanted a skirt that was not going to break the pattern up. And of course, I love that style like Genoa skirt, but of course, being on the bias, it, I couldn't do it with this um, print. And you know, wanting a directional print, you wanted to show it off. Um, I was searching for a skirt pattern that would um, kind of have all the things I wanted. And that was a high waist elastic, uh, no, no pockets, just nice and simple and more of an A-line shape. Um, so what I did, I made a skirt, the Edith skirt from a Dorada Davies patterns. That the Edith is actually a capsule wardrobe, like a dress um, top and skirt or separates. You can do quite a lot with it with different sleeves and necklines. Um, but I decided to make the A-line skirt. Did a really nice thick elastic waist, left the pockets out. And I was really happy with how it came up. And I wore this with a really nice little brown singlet top. And I think that way it showed off that really beautiful fabric let that the fabric and the print shine through without sort of taking away from it um, but i really think this fabric would be beautiful in something like a shirt dress as well for summer um, or even just a blouse um, for autumn winter as well but love it in the skirt and definitely can highly recommend uh, Zarada Davies patterns because they're always fantastic so that was my Edith skirt I wore that heaps with a little denim jacket um, sort of thing you wear a little plain white t-shirt with as well so it's great when you get those capsule wardrobe patterns that you can mix and match and make all different alternative um, things to, to go to work through your wardrobe. So that one was lovely to wear, nice and light cotton too. I then had a message from Kate to say that the brand new Pattern Emporium pattern was being released in the next couple of weeks, which surprise, surprise, was a skirt. Now Kate has this really weird knack of knowing how to read my mind. When I'm searching the internet for a pattern and I have a specific one in mind and I have trouble finding it and I'll be searching and searching and I'll you know sometimes I can waste a lot or well, not waste time but like take a lot of time looking for that particular pattern uh, and not find it and then all of a sudden out of the blue Kate will uh, message me and say there's a new pattern coming out and what do you know it was a skirt it was the exact sort of skirt I was looking for so I said this is the second or third time she's actually done this so uh, it's just funny how we're on the same wavelength a lot like that. Pattern Emporium released the coastal side split skirt and I love this skirt it is such a fantastic make for all year round um, I've done it in a beautiful viscose linen in this maple colour I opted for the one side split, but you can do one or one on each side, so two or none, it's up to you. Um, but the great thing about this is it also has options for having a beautiful uh, front pocket. Um, you can do two different uh, waist tights, the lower or the higher waist, and I went for the higher one. Um, but I thought that was a fantastic staple for the wardrobe, but one that I hadn't had a pattern quite like it. I love her um, way of describing you know, how to do the modded uh, corners which is fantastic she gives a great tutorial on that as well and it sewed up like a dream really fast so um, but one of those patterns that just looks great on it's simple and you can't believe that there's nothing out there like that already that's what I find with her patterns I'm like wow you know it's simple it's wearable but there's nothing else quite like it out there so sometimes the simple patterns are the best because it gives you the uh, chance to use that fabric that you're wanting to showcase uh, without taking away from it with the details. So you can definitely add more detail to that skirt or you can leave it simple and plain like I have. But 
that was a favorite of mine i made a size 14 and the split was a really nice um, height on there as well so i think a lot of you went on to make that i would love to see that done in a wintery fabric with black uh, or tan boots as well so i can see it in even a tartan or plaid check i think it would be beautiful with a little black um, coat or a cord jacket so there's lots of options for that coastal size split skirt i'm loving it another make i had mentioned and this was one i sewed up for the so yellow for endo which of course was jess from so what if i sew and she was bringing awareness to endometriosis and a lot of people sewed something yellow and of course it's not a color i wear a lot like a lot of people I think a lot of people find yellow hard i love a mustard and a more earthy toned yellow but this was a beautiful fabric godmother fabric uh, a crepe viscose which is just stunning and the beautiful kind of a I would say it's like Japanese inspired but then you've got these really pretty little um, garden wheelbarrow carts on the front of it as well and I was umming and ahhing what to do with this fabric and I still have a little bit left in the store there's not a lot um, but I think a lot of you love the the look of it like I did with the Dahlia print on there I wanted a pattern that would kind of be a blouse with a nice almost grown on kimono style sleeve um, that was hard finding something simple like that I know that a lot of people are doing the big puff sleeves at the moment I wanted something a bit more simple so I had to do a bit of searching but I found these straight stitch designs meadow wood blouse and I decided to sew it up and I've got to say it came up really really large I would suggest definitely sizing down uh, I just take quite a bit quite a bit in um, from the seams. I made the size uh, 14, uh, which, you know, American size, which is about a um, 12 here for Australian sizing. But I actually ended up taking so much off that I think I could have sized down two sizes. And I think next time I will definitely do that. Um, I love that kind of over the bust um, simple v-neck and then the gathers falling from the bust. And I, it gave me the option to do these beautiful little lilac buttons which I think set it off beautifully but it has got the um it's got the beautiful soft kind of grown on sleeve kimono style sleeve appeal but I think sometimes with a blouse like this you have to be really careful that if it's too big it doesn't give that kind of tenty feel if you know what I mean so once I'd taken in quite a bit off the under the arms and the seams I found I was really happy with the fit of it but definitely a look at the sizing and the finished garment measurements which I did do but I still think I could have gone down another couple of sizes because I find the shoulder the drop shoulder sleeves can be quite um, look quite big on me and sort of give you that swimming on effect if you know what I mean um, but definitely love the blouse love the lines of it and I think that soft floaty kind of blouse um, pattern really matches the fabric nicely uh, I think it's definitely a sort of fabric you can make a lovely swishy dress from as well um, but I really love that contrast of the, the purple or the lilac against the lemon and it's just so pretty uh, I've worn it once or twice but of course the weather's sort of up and down here I haven't worn it a lot it looks really nice with a pair of jeans uh, I think if you're making this pattern in a more structured linen or cotton you could feel it might be a bit uh, oversized so definitely look at the size and maybe size down on this one just from uh, from the personal experience I've had but great pattern instructions the pattern's a really lovely design and I love anything that's got that V neck front it's a favorite style of mine but I think the there are options to do the full bust option on that blouse I'm not sure if you really need to do that because there is quite a lot of room around the bust even with the regular bust sizing but definitely yeah look at things like your finished garment measurements and always think about making a 12 if you're wanting to use a nice uh, or more expensive fabric one pattern that I went a bit crazy on last month was the pattern emporium all in easy fit shirt I'd made it before in a shirt style dress this time I wanted to make a couple of simple shirts out of some really beautiful fabric um, but I still have both of these in store these fabrics this one was the gorgeous gardenia print from uh, Dashwood Studios I found it a dream to sew up of course you can see I've just washed these two and haven't uh, ironed them as yet um, but the actual fabric itself is just stunning it is a really pretty abstract print um, of course Rachel Parker's designs are so lovely uh, it's just so nice to wear that wearable art um, on a simple shirt I loved um, finding a button that matched a nice little navy blue button um, but definitely once I'd made one and I actually just decided to do the elastic around the bottom of the sleeves I didn't bother with the cuffs because I like to roll my sleeves up when I'm busy you know doing dishes or cleaning the house occasionally and will get too warm I like to be able to push the sleeves up I find it a lot easier to do than having a cuff 
can sure call me lazy, but I just find that that is the option I prefer to go for. Um, so I really love that. And then uh, I made, that was a size 14, and then I made the uh, Cosette fabric, which this one's sold out, but I just had another delivery of the graphic design, which is a smaller scale print just like this. This one I absolutely love. I decided to size up a little bit more into the uh, 16 around the body, but kept the 14 around the shoulders and the sleeves. But I actually widened my sleeve to make it a bit more puffy and billowy. That's the um, Meet You There dress sleeve. So if you've got the Meet You There pattern from Pattern Emporium, you can add those sleeves onto this all in easy fit blouse. And both blouses I've made with the regular stand up collar because I just find that I, yeah, I really love that. It's an all year round style collar for me. The cam collar is wonderful as well. It's nice, it looks really smart on, but I find it working with a collar and a stand um, quite therapeutic lately. I'm really enjoying doing a lot of uh, shirt sewing. And also don't forget the um, Sew April Blouse Challenges are on at the moment, and that is run by this year by Gabrielle and Ruan. Uh, and they are, they've got to have a lot, a lot of entries, I think, and so much inspiration for blouse sewing. So I will have an episode out with some blouse inspiration for me. So if you are thinking of entering that challenge, um, yeah, you can go ahead and uh, use, use some of that inspo that I'll be providing. And also I am going to sponsor a prize. There'll be a $50 voucher sponsored by myself and from the store. And also there's so many different indie pattern companies sponsoring prizes and Gabrielle's shop will also be sponsoring the major prizes with some vouchers as well. So it's a great competition, but fantastic time to think about sewing some blouses because they really are a great wearable thing in the wardrobe. They don't take masses of fabric. And if you're really finding that you're not wearing a lot of dresses, blouses are great. Um, I do tend to go through the wardrobe this time of year and think, oh, all these dresses, I'm not going to get the wear out of for winter. I really think I should have made a blouse out of this. And I really think I wish I had made a shirt out of that. And sometimes I'll look at things and think, you know, well, I consider chopping it up, making a blouse of the fabric. And then I have to stop myself and think, no, there are plenty other things to make. And I'll get to somewhere and wish I, wish I hadn't have chopped things up. So I have to stop myself from recreating and repurposing things if I'm not wearing them. I don't know if it's just something that I do or if you guys have that same habit of looking at everything as a, a project and then maybe you can repurpose it and make it more wearable or better, better fitting into your wardrobe. So I'd love to hear what you love to do and what you love repurposing in your wardrobe. Let me know in the comments below. And the last two bespoke boxes, of course, were for February and March. And I didn't talk about the Feb make in my last vlog. I think it was a bit too early still to be putting it out there. But I made the Forget Me Not Lola and this beautiful viscose linen. It's a great pattern. And Joe has done such a wonderful job with the drafting on this just really simple um, shift-like dress with the darts at the front. And you've got that really pretty frill detail and that lovely inverted pleat on the back and I made a tie for mine and it's just such a great pattern it's also fantastic to make in the top and all of my customers that purchased the February the L'Amour the love box uh, for Valentine's Day would have already seen this and also on Instagram if you follow me over on Instagram don't forget to head on over and follow the, uh, the Daily Society page then you'll see all of my makes that was from the fed box so the lola is a fantastic little pattern really simple quick make but looks really lovely and classy on and it's just so nice it's equally as nice in a soft viscose or a linen or something more structured so you can do quite a bit with that pattern so i love it with the little tie on there and the pink i was really embracing a lot more pink this year which is something different for me the last make of the month was also from the from the March bespoke box and that was the Empress box which is all about an Indian kind of elephant style theme which was uh, based on the festival holly and I know a lot of you love that fabric. This was a gorgeous Lady McElroy uh, linen viscose, really lovely quality, some beautiful elephants on there as well. And this one was actually a funny story because you guys that uh, have seen the box vlog will know that I actually... Uh, underestimated fabric and I, I sold about a box too too many and that meant that my fabric was uh, a little bit less than what I needed to make the style like Armadale dress and there are quite a few panels to cut out on that dress and I thought I had enough started cutting them all out and realized that one set of panels was meant to be two pairs not two panels so the whole dress thing had to be scrapped for me but I decided to go ahead and just make the shirt out of the, the style like Armadale in a shirt 
and I actually ended up popping it on without buttons. I made like a, almost like a little dust style throw over shirt. I still think I may even end up putting buttons on there anyway because I might get a bit more wear out of it. But really came out really lovely and it'd be a great pattern to make a style like Armadale dress. And I talked in the video about how I was going to upsize because from the garment measurements it looked like I might have needed to go for around 18 to 20 around the waist and 14 to 16 around the shoulders. But I made the straight size 16 and it was spot on perfect. I really don't think I would need to grade up because you do have quite a bit of ease uh, where it hits at a natural waist and then you get the ease in the skirt and it flows out like an A-line. So definitely uh, a great pattern. It has got lovely um, princess seam details and it's just a, it's a really special dress. I think a lot of people have loved the construction of it. And of course, Stylark have a lot more detailed instructions now. A lot of their new patterns are upgraded with sizes and also um, the multi-size patterns, which I have in store, um, are fantastic. And a lot of them have QR codes that you can follow along with, sew along, which is brilliant. Um, they are really uh, one of my best selling patterns in the store and I know a lot of you love a printed pattern. I really love the, the printed pattern multi-size because I find I can do a lot of grading and it really takes the work out of having to print out X amount of patterns does the work for you. So a uh, lovely fabric though. The elephants on that are just so, so pretty. Um, so I love the earthy tones with those pops of color. I think it really uh, lends itself nicely to the wardrobe and yes, just with a pair of jeans, even a little white tank top. So I actually wore mine with a pink underneath and I think it came up really nicely as well. So they uh, each for my March makes. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Just a reminder again, the boxes are launching tonight at 7 p.m. I do have a lot of new fabrics coming in store that I'll be having new videos coming out through the week for you guys to watch because I know a lot of you love to be updated. But if you want to be in the know and see what's coming in store, um, head on over and you, you know, probably best to subscribe to my newsletter, which is usually once a week. And that way you get let uh, know about episodes that are released, any fabrics that are released or sales that are happening, anything new in the store and just a bit of your general chit chat, what's happening in the sewing world. So there's a lot of ways to keep updated. Not only that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. And I would love it if you could give this episode a thumbs up because that helps other sewers in a community like you find the channel. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful sewing week. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.